So, a little bit of background on this entire situation. The Renaissance Periodization Crew, Mike Isretel, Jared Feather, and company, they often release training videos. On the screen, often they have the exercise, the sets, the reps, and their reps in reserve. Now, reps in reserve, or RIR, is a measure of how close you are to failure. Now, Lyle McDonald, who has been in the fitness industry basically forever, has taken exception to this zero to one rep in reserve statement. And he has called them out, basically. He said, those sets are not as close to failure as you think. So in this video, I'm going to look at these actual sets in question and see if they are actually zero to one rep in reserve. I don't have a dog in this fight. To me, it doesn't really matter. I just want to look at these actual sets and see if they are actually zero to one rep in reserve. So first, before we get into the sets, I want to disclose my bias. Towards Renaissance Periodization, I am a fan. I like their stuff. I've watched their stuff for years and years, and I they are one of the few channels that I have notifications on on my YouTube channel because they are that good. I consume a large amount of their content and they are generally extremely on point. Mike himself is extremely funny and I consume a huge amount of his stuff. It is top tier. Now, Lyle McDonald, I have consumed his stuff off and on over the past few years. Um, I think he is at times unnecessarily abrasive, inflammatory. He starts stuff, he trolls people. Uh, often his wording is direct to the point of you know, unnecessarily pissing people off. And, you know, that's just who he is as a person. Um, I think he might agree that he's a bit of an asshole at times, um, but that's just sort of his personality. And, um, you know, if anything, my bias in this fight is towards Renaissance periodization, for sure. All right, let's get into some of the footage. They're doing Smith Machine close grip bench press, zero to one RIR. He's going down, slow eccentric. Exploding upwards, 1.45 seconds. This other rep, 1.6 seconds, and he's he's done. Technique, great. RIR. Lyle. <laughs> Lyle, listen. We don't know how to go to failure. <laughs> I mean, obviously he's being sarcastic, but it's kind of true. I honestly just, I'm a fraud. You're not a fraud. You're not a fraud. You can, <laughs> you can see Charlie cracking up in the background. Jared's an idiot. Yeah. Charlie doesn't speak English. Making him both. <laughs> Making him Lyle, we need your help. Lyle McDonald, we need your help. Please let us come to Austin, Texas. Teach us how to train hard. The number of people you coach reflects your knowledge. Your physique reflects your knowledge. The fact that you're not just a guy on the internet yelling at people. We're going to come to Austin. You're going to teach us how to really train for once in our life. And that'll be that. So as a general rule of thumb, if someone criticizes you and then you have to attack their physique or appearance, they were probably right. Here's this last set. You can see on this last rep, three seconds. That is probably about one rep in reserve. He probably could have gotten one more. Moving to pushdowns, 0.9 seconds, 0.7 seconds, speed demon over here, 0.9 seconds, and he's done. There's no way that was zero to one reps in reserve. That honestly looked like four, five, six reps in reserve. And the thing is, when you're doing high volume training, high frequency training, and you know you already have 10 sessions that you've done in the week, and you're doing like 30, 40 sets per workout, the sets aren't gonna be to failure, especially when you have three people training. So I think they should just really remove the zero to one reps in reserve label, because it's clearly not true. 0.9 seconds, getting a nice pause, one second on the nose, and he's done. I actually copied and pasted that last rep by mistake because I figured he would get at least one more. Here's Charlie hitting up the same exercises, getting up, getting a really nice pause, nice stretch, 0.6 seconds, it's flying up, 0.7 seconds, and he's done. These are not, you know, one rep in reserve. These are probably two, three, four reps in reserve. Um, so I think, again, zero to one reps in reserve, no freaking way. And for them to actually defend themselves saying it's zero to one reps in reserve, no. Here's Jared, nice long pause, 1.4 seconds, getting a nice pause and stretch at the bottom, slowing three seconds, or 2.9 seconds on that rep. That is probably one rep in reserve. He probably could have gotten one more if he really wanted. It would have been 
five, six sep- seconds for the rep. It would have sucked, but he still had one rep left, I would say. All right, moving on to seated hamstring curls. 0.75 seconds. Pretty nice contraction, full range of motion. 0.7 seconds, and he's done. Again, I copied and pasted the label because I figured he'd you know, get a few more reps. Uh, Mike Isertel, he's going, 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 getting a nice pump. 0.7 seconds, 0.7 seconds, really hammering them out, and that's the set. That's that's the set. Yeah. You could have done 80 trillion more. Hey, Lyle McDonald, <laughs> fuck you. You know how to train a failure, Mike? It's sad. Mike thinks he can train a failure, but he really can't. Sad to see him literally fly. He doesn't know. I mean, obviously, he's being sarcastic, but if you look at the rep speed, objectively, there's just no way for them to claim that is failure training. That is an insult to actually training to failure. Jared Feather, 0.8 seconds, and he's done. Actually, in this case, he actually, I think he, he pulled something or there was a strain or something. So I guess this was failure because he, he you know, pulled a muscle or something. So this is an exception. Just because your rep speed isn't extremely grindy doesn't mean you hit failure. But typically, if you don't have a slow grindy rep, you're not really at failure. Moving on to leg press. This machine looks like pure hell. 1.2 seconds, 1.3 seconds, a little bit slower. Last rep, 1.8 seconds. Here I thought he was gathering himself to do like two or three or four more reps, but he was just done. And I think 1.8 seconds for your last rep, like a slight sticking point, that's not zero to one reps in reserve. And then he's down on the floor. Now, I'm not saying this isn't a hard effort. You can see Charlie here smashing out like a million goddamn reps. This is a hard set. I'm not saying they don't work hard. You know, you can see them in the background just lying on the ground. These are hard sets. But to say they are to failure, I think that is really not accurate. And this just shows that even very advanced, knowledgeable, elite athletes aren't as close to failure as they think. You see this rep, 1.5 seconds, and he's done. To say that gun to his head, he couldn't have gotten two more reps... I think that's just not accurate. And again, I'm not hating, I'm not trolling, I'm not taking anything away from these gentlemen. Look at their faces. They are absolutely destroyed. They are monsters, they are beasts, they train their asses off. They're just not nearly as close to failure as they think. 1.9, 1.5, and done. Again, not nearly as close to failure as they think. Some nice pauses on these dips, 1.2 seconds, another nice pause, good stretch, 0.8 seconds, another rep, one second, and done. All right, let's see what Mike has, hitting up some dips, stretch at the bottom, 0.9 seconds, another rep, 1.3 seconds, and, and done. You know, to say that he couldn't have gotten two more reps, I don't know, 0.7, 0.7, 0.7. 0.7, 0.7, and done. Next, I'm going to play a clip of Brad Schoenfeld, one of the most prolific exercise scientist researchers in history, doing a set to failure. Here we go, failure set. Failure set. Grab those elbows, squeeze. Good. 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 All the way to failure. There we go. All the way to failure. That's my failure, man. That's my failure, man. And honestly, that looks like a warm up. It looks like he's getting ready to do a working set. It doesn't look like an all out effort. There's no grinding rep. There's no straining rep. It's not like he's, you know, gun to head type of situation. He's not really pushing all out. It looks like he probably has two, three, maybe even four, five, six reps still in the tank. And I mean that not trolling, not like, you know, throwing shade or anything, but it is not a set to failure. And this kind of makes me question a lot of the research that he has put out. If this is his failure, which is actually sort of like a warm up, not really a working set at all, it really does make you think this is why a lot of his research shows 
you know, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45 sets per muscle group per week is optimal because they're not working sets. They're not sets to true failure. They are warm up sets. Next, I'm gonna play a few of my clips from one recent workout showing you what a true zero to one rep in reserve set actually looks like. And I hope that you can actually tell the difference. So here I am doing some cable crossovers, a few reps sped up so you don't have to watch all of them. 1.5 seconds, that is my baseline, that is my standard. 1.5 seconds, again, you can see controlling the eccentric, getting a full stretch, full contraction at the bottom, 1.5 seconds again. A little bit slower, harder, 1.6 seconds. But even though it slows, I'm not going to stop. 2.2 seconds, but controlling the eccentric, I know I have more. I'm about to shit myself, 3.3 seconds, but I know there is still work to be done. Controlled, struggling, squeezing down, 4.8 seconds, but I know I have one more goddamn rep. I know it's going to be long, it's going to be shitty, it's going to be the highlight of my goddamn day. 7.5 seconds, but I'm not done. Control the eccentric, boom, end of set. Next up, we have a client of mine. Yes, I asked for permission before using it. I never ever use any client footage or photos or transformations or anything without specifically asking for it every single time. He was actually cool with me using it and not even blurring his face out. This guy has only been weight training a few months and I've only been working with him for three weeks, but he knows how to push a set. You can see these are grindy reps, these are hard reps, but he's still going because he knows he can get that extra rep. He could have racked the bar at one rep. In fact, I would say most people would have racked the bar at one rep, but he didn't. Next up, we have seated Arnold Press, a great shoulder exercise. First rep explodes upwards, easy as pie. Establishing a baseline, it looks like 1.25 seconds here. Going onward, Focusing on controlling the negative, exploding upwards, getting a good, nice, full range of motion. Another 1.6 seconds, a little bit slower. 1.9 seconds, controlling the eccentric, slight pause, exploding upwards, a better rep. 1.6 seconds, exploding upwards, trying to get another one. It's tough, I got off balance. 3.3 seconds with free weights, it's harder than a Smith machine. Exploding upwards, a bit of a grind, tough to lock out, 2.9 seconds controlling the eccentric, but I think I have another rep. Exploding upwards, hitting the sticking point, deciding not to be a little bitch, and locking it out. Barely. Eight second rep. But that's not failure. That's failure. All right, moving on to seated hamstring curls. Now, I did do this today because I saw that they did seated hamstring curls, and I wanted to show you what a true goddamn set to failure on seated hamstring curls is. Now they stopped somewhere in here, probably five, six, seven reps away from true failure. Getting grindy. It's tough to get that full contraction. The hardest part of the range of motion is at the very end. So you can keep going if you are willing to suffer. They clearly were not. Almost four seconds on their rep, but I'm not done. Hit a sticking point, grind through. Hit another sticking point, grind through again. 5.5 seconds on their rep, but I'm not done. I think maybe there's an outside chance that I can get another rep, but I do not. Failure to achieve full range of motion. All the way to failure. There we go, all the way to failure. Now, a few things. First, I'm not saying you have to train to failure. You absolutely do not have to train to failure to make very, very good progress. But I am saying you should know where failure is. If you do a set and the last rep takes you literally one second on the concentric, not even 1.9 seconds, just one second flat, it was almost certainly not near failure. You probably had two, three, four, maybe even five reps left in the tank. And it's very difficult to self-assess. If you put zero to one reps in reserve in your video, and it's clearly not, you leave yourself open to people disagreeing with you. And in this case, I agree with Lyle. He's right. I don't like him. I like Mike far more, but he's right. 
Mike, Jared, Charlie, they are all very, very advanced athletes, very, very big athletes, much bigger than me, bigger than Lyle, very, very strong, much stronger than me, stronger than Lyle. They are all very knowledgeable, very, very experienced. They know what they're doing, and they are leading brains in the industry. They know what they are doing. However, none of that matters because we are just assessing a set and how close it is to failure. And in that regard, Lyle is correct because they are not as close to failure as they think. It's hard to get this kind of feedback. It's hard to you know take this criticism on the nose, especially if you have devoted your life to this and you have a doctorate in exercise science. But it doesn't really matter because Lyle is still correct. And I wish Mike had responded in a more mature and positive manner, especially when objectively he's wrong and Lyle is right. Hey, Lyle McDonald, <laughs> fuck you. Schoenfeld set these sets that you see that are, you know, zero to one rep in reserve, but not really, maybe two, three, four reps in reserve. They explain a lot. They explain volume. They explain why a lot of studies, they say 20, 30, 40, 45 sets per muscle group per week is optimal. If you're doing only warm-ups and you're not sniffing failure, 45 sets per week might be optimal. But if you're actually going to failure, that's just not going to happen. You're not going to be able to do that many sets to failure. It's just not ever going to happen. That right there was a turning point in my entire development as an athlete. The volume equation and, and really what seemed most beneficial for me and more of the DC principles and putting together that kind of system. And, and then from that point forward, that's when I really started to change in terms of my own physique. And I, and I've honestly never looked back since. I mean, the only time that I'll train higher volume will be just for one workout when a bunch of guys get together and we're just having fun. And it's more so about having fun within that moment rather than my specific progress on that day. Um, but yeah, that for me, that for sure was a turning point in me. Um, I went, once I started a lower volume approach, that's when I really started to put tissue on and, you know, at a quick rate. Because you just, you can't survive that. It's too much, too close to failure. There's going to be an inverse relationship between how close you go to failure and how much volume you can do. So when I see someone and they're like, yeah, I did, you know, 15 sets for chest all to failure. I'm like, mm, all right, send me a video. And when they do, usually it's a lot of three to five rep in reserve type of work. And there's nothing wrong with that. You can still get results doing that. But be honest with how close you actually are to failure. So here's a graphic on how to decide your optimal training volume. It's talking about various factors that influence how much volume you can handle. So diet quality, the better your diet is, the better you can recover. Your gender, females can often recover from a little bit more training. More sleep equals more recoverability. Same thing with stress level. If you are stressed out, it will impact your recovery substantially. Training level, if you're more advanced, you can recover better. You don't get a sore. Energy balance, if you're in a surplus, you can handle slightly more training. And genetics, some people just, they have stronger joints or they don't get as much of an inflammatory response to training and they can just handle more training. However, the biggest factor when it comes to optimal training volume is how close every set is to failure. If you assume that every set is equal, every working set is the same, that's just not the case. A set that is five reps away from failure, you can probably handle five, six, seven, maybe even eight times as many sets because every single set just isn't all that stressful. Even two reps in reserve is not nearly the same as a true failure set because those last few reps, they take freaking forever and they are extremely draining. I'm not saying you have to go to failure or even that it's optimal, but you have to take it into account when designing your program. Because if you don't, and you just assume every single set is the same, you are doing yourself a disservice and you are lying to yourself. It also explains the very, very high frequencies that Mike Isretel suggests. His baseline is basically two to three times per week. That's like low to moderate frequency. And then high frequency is like four or five, six times per week. Again, if you're keeping a lot of reps in reserve, that's fine. That might actually be optimal. I'm not saying you can't get results with this kind of system. 
but don't kid yourself by thinking that this is actually failure training or one rep in reserve training because it's definitely not by definition. If you're doing high frequency and high volume, there's just no way that you're actually training to failure. Whether you're enhanced, whether you're not enhanced, natural, unnatural, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's just not going to happen having all these variables to 11 at the same time. I'm also not saying they don't train hard. They clearly do train hard. And even a set that is two to three reps away from failure on a heavy compound movement, that is a hard effort even if it's not as close to failure as they might think. Finally, Renaissance Periodization is still one of my go-to sources, and they will continue to be one of my go-to sources. And I will continue to absolutely wholeheartedly recommend their content, and they're absolutely still a force for good in the fitness industry. 100%. Just because they get their RIR a little bit wrong, not that big a deal in the grand scheme of things. All right, that is all for this video. Like, subscribe dislike if you really want to. I don't, I don't really give a shit. And I'll see you, maybe, in the next video. Peace.